In previous videos, I talked about using 16mm film with the Minolta 16QT and similar cameras that use the 110 format. In those videos, I used black and white film. The results were great in my opinion. But is it possible to shoot color film like Kodak Vision 3 with these cameras? The short answer is yes. You can load Kodak Vision 3 on a Minolta 16 and it will work just fine. The problem is getting the film processed. Let me clarify something first. This is a cinematography channel. And I will always talk about photography as a primary element of cinematography. If you can shoot film using 16 or 35mm film and get it processed in the right chemistry, you can familiarize yourself with the film without spending the kind of money that shooting movies takes. You can then apply that knowledge when you shoot a movie using exactly the same material. Today, everyone and their little brother are taking pictures using Kodak Vision 3 films. It totally makes sense. Shooting Vision 3 is cheaper. It has a fine grain. It was designed to be scanned. And there is a variety of films available for different situations. There are tons of videos about shooting and processing the film. I'm not going into the details. I'm just going to talk about something that nobody seems to be doing today, which is processing 110 film or short batches of 16 using ECN2 chemistry. Throughout the video, I will show pictures I took and processed myself. You can see what is possible and what you can expect. I already have the developing tank, changing bag, bottles and stuff I used to process my black and white film. So I just had to get the right chemicals. I searched online and I decided to buy the Conspiracy of Cartographers kit. This kit includes the chemicals to prepare one liter of developer and bleach, which are two of the steps you have to follow to develop color film. I got this kit because it was less expensive than the other ones, but also because it allows me to use any fixer, including fixers for black and white film. Since I already had the Kodak fixer I used to process my black and white film, it was a no-brainer. Other steps you follow when processing film are stop bath and photo flow. The last one is optional, but it helps a lot to avoid water spots on the film. I have never used a stop bath when I process black and white film. I just use water, which works fine for me. I decided to do the same with color film. I don't know if it was a good idea. More on that later. When you process color film, you have to maintain the temperature of the chemicals throughout the process. The temperature is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit and the tolerance is minus or plus 2 degrees. I bought a water heater that has a sensor and can keep the water at a given temperature automatically. I took my Minolta 16 QT with me on a trip to Los Angeles. I took pictures using Kodak Vision 3 50D, which is a daylight balance film with super fine grain. I also took some pictures at the Roundup event you saw on my previous video using a roll of Cine Steel 50D, which is basically a Vision 3 without ramjet. Finally, I used a 16mm Canon Scoopic M motion picture camera to take some shots using 500T. I have some old 500T stock in the fridge. I wanted to shoot a few feet of film just to see how sensitive the film was. I exposed the film as ISO 160 and the results were great. Processing the film was time consuming and frustrating and the results were neither terribly bad nor great. I processed film three times and the three times I got great images mixed with bad ones. Remember I said I don't believe in stop bath? Well, I may have to become a believer and use a real thing, at least for color. The fixer that I used was already contaminated with black and white chemicals. I knew that and I decided to use it for the first batch. 
I don't know why. The results were not bad, and I used a fresh fixer for the other batches, but I'm sure that had an impact on the color. I got some unusual marks on the 16mm film, blue and magenta marks, and in some cases, they cast all over the image. I never got anything like that on black and white. The most interesting part is that the lines are defined, like the chemicals had an instant impact on certain areas when they entered the tank and touched the film. I posted some pictures on film developing groups on Facebook, and nobody could tell me what caused those marks. Someone suggested the film was touching itself inside the developing tank, which is a possibility. Why does the line look so defined? I had situations in the past when processing black and white that film was touching against itself. I got marks, but it didn't look like that. The roll of cine steel came out looking better, though the color is inconsistent. The entire roll has a color cast, but some areas have weird spots that make the color worse. That made the negative very difficult to color correct. It wasn't perfect, but I didn't get as many horrible marks as I did with the 16mm film. I'm not exactly happy with the outcome, because I was not able to get predictable results. I don't want to shoot film and hope the spots are not on top of important pictures. The other negative aspect of ECN2 chemistry is its terribly bad shelf life. The chemistry lasts for two or three weeks in the best cases. I rarely shoot color film, so I have two options. I can send the roll of 35 out to be processed, or I could shoot several rolls, save them, get a kit that includes all the chemicals needed for the process, and develop the film at home. There are labs processing a roll of 35mm film for $8, which is not bad at all, but that becomes $20 if I include taxes and shipping. I can buy an ECN2 kit for $20 to $30 plus tax and shipping. With that kit, I could process more than 10 rolls of 35 and 16, but I have to use the chemicals quickly since they decay fast. I'm going to give it another try in the future. I love the pictures I got using the Minolta 16 QT, but I couldn't find a lab in the US that processes 110 in ECN2. If I want to take pictures using that format, I have to process the film myself. For 35mm, I'm going to buy some rolls, shoot them, and send them out to be processed. There you go! It is possible to shoot Kodak Vision 3 films and process them at home. Is it easy? I don't think so. But it is fun. Thanks for watching the Cinematography Lab.